today we're going to do a tutorial that's going to probably be cut up into several parts. Uh, it's going to be kind of a long one. Um, recently a buddy of mine uh, uh, was uh, telling me that he wanted to spruce up his web design, uh, make it look a little more professional, and he gave me this uh, website you see here as an example of what he, he was kind of going for or his idea of professional. So what we're going to do today is, and over the course of these, these videos, is we're not going to take this design uh, completely. I um, don't want to get myself in any trouble here with the uh, tech notes guys. Um, but we're going to just kind of take certain elements of this and I'm going to show you from start to finish how you can uh, build the uh, layout in Photoshop and then we'll continue to cut up the layout and bring it into Dreamweaver and set up the HTML and CSS. Um, so first what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Photoshop. This is a, a document that uh, I've made already uh, before this tutorial. I, I use it actually on, on several of my client work. It's pretty much just a blank um, canvas with it's a 1920 by 1080 which uh, venture to say most consumers don't have any uh, resolutions higher than that. Um, and what we've done here is I've made these guidelines here um, from this guide to this guide is 1024 pixels uh, this guy here is just kind of showing us the center um, we're gonna make this page in, in between these these guides here uh, that way it will fit on um, everything down to uh, an old CRT monitor um, I don't think anybody really is, is using anything older than um, a monitor that can display 1020 uh, width. Alright, now I've got another uh, couple of documents open here. What I did uh, was I created a screenshot of this website that we're going to be modeling this over. What we're going to do is just kind of take this and toss it into our document so we can kind of have a, a reference to some of these concepts. We're going to select all, uh, control A, and copy, control C, come over here to our uh, site template, and we're going to paste it. And first things first, we're going to name this layer, and we'll just call it uh, screenshot guide. Alright, and next we're going to move this uh, layer here so it's within our uh, boundaries here. So we're going to hold down control and just kind of place this here in the center. And I'm just uh, eyeballing this here, but uh, we can kind of see. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's here in the center. Um, the first thing we'll tackle is the uh, the background here, this this subtle gradient. So what we'll do is we're going to create another layer. We will call this layer background. And we're going to make this gradient here. So we're going to select our gradient tool, which is over here. If you hold down the, uh, your left mouse button on the fill bucket, you can select gradient. That's annoying, but uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to edit our gradient by coming up here and clicking on this. And we're going to pick our starting color here. And we're going to use the uh, eyedropper and just pick this color here, this really light shade of gray. And we're going to get our ending color and select the uh, darker shade of gray. And it's a nice, uh, real subtle gradient. Uh, we can go ahead and save this if we wanted to. And say OK. Alright, and we're going to, for now at least, we're just going to have the gradient go from the top of the uh, screen to the bottom. 
So let's just go ahead and hide this screenshot guide here. And to make a gradient, you are going to click your starting point and then drag down. You'll see a line um, to choose where the ending point is. And the starting point is going to be the first shade. And then where you end it will be the, the uh, last or the ending shade. So let's go ahead and click. And you can see the the line's pretty uh, flexible here. Well, we're going to want to hold this down uh, or constrain it to be straight. So we'll hold down shift while we're doing this. And we'll just bring it down to the end. And there you go. We have our subtle gradient. Um, if we wanted to get a little more light and a little more dark, we could start the gradient here. Um, but this, this gradient's so subtle that it's really hard to tell. All right, next thing we're going to do, we'll turn our screenshot guide back on. And we'll, let's move this layer up to the very top so we can always turn it on and off. All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to create this, uh, this box up here for the navigation and logo. Um, and to do that, we're going to use the shape tool. And we're going to get the uh, rounded rectangle. Um, we're going to make the uh, radius... Uh, seven pixels, and that's going to determine um, how rounded our edges are going to be. So let's just come up here and get right here on the edge, and we'll come to the other side. And there you go. Let's go ahead and turn off our screenshot guide again. And uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and rasterize this layer. We're just going to take it from a vector shape into just a raster um, image. So there's our shape. Um, and we're not going to worry about the color of it right now. We can adjust that later. Let's get this uh, drop shadow down. So we'll hide this layer. Turn our shape back on. Um, we'll, we'll name it. And then we're going to come down here to this little effects icon. And we're just going to say drop shadow. And the, uh, the shadow on this the screenshot uh, is kind of centered so that there's a shadow around the entire box. So what we'll go ahead and do is turn the distance down to 1. And um, maybe turn the opacity down just a little bit so it's real soft. Um, we can, uh, this is a non destructive uh, editing here doing these layer styles. We can always turn them on and off. So, if we need to make adjustments uh, after we take a look at the screenshot again, that's not a problem. Um, another thing we can do is do this color overlay. And we're going to change the color to black. So, there, now we have our little header box there. And we'll just say OK. Yeah, let's go and make this uh, layer invisible and pull up our screenshot again. I'd say that's fairly close. I think the uh, shadow may be a little less subtle. So let's go ahead and double click on the drop shadow. And we'll bring the opacity back up a little bit. And bring the distance actually to zero. And maybe drop the opacity back down some more. And again, we can always come back and, and mess with that later. The next thing we can do is we can make this box here, this uh, little splash um, area here. So again, we will click on our rounded rectangle shape tool. And let's just come up to the corner here and go ahead and drag down to here. And like with the uh, header background, we're going to right-click on the layer and rasterize it. And uh, if you need more uh, help understanding raster and vector images, so I'll do a tutorial on that a little bit later, or you can just Google it. Um, it's a good, good thing to know. And we'll just call this the uh, content background. And let's turn this off so we can see what the coloring is. 
I've selected an image to come in to, to put in here um, off of a free stock photo site, and it's this image here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm fond of it yet, and we might use something uh, different later. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use more of a blue color um, to kind of stray away from, from ripping off of these guys here. So just for now, let's make a gradient um, that's going to fill up our content box. So what we can do is first let's go ahead and get our drop shadow correct. Um, and it looks as if our drop shadows are going to be pretty pretty well similar um, throughout here, if not identical. So what we can do is come up to this header background, right click on it, and we can say copy layer style. And then right click on this layer and paste that layer style. And it's going to give us the exact same drop shadow um, that we have on, on the top box here. However, we do not want this color. Uh, so let's click on that, double click on it, and we'll bring up this dialog box. Let's just turn off the color overlay. And we're going to instead make a gradient overlay. And by default, we have this uh, pretty standard black to a white gradient. So what we want is a blue gradient. So let's go here and pick one of our, our uh, stopping colors here. And we'll get blue. Um, I'm going by memory. I don't really remember what you know, shade of blue that image was. Um, uh, nice thing again about these layer styles is they are non-destructive. So we can always come in here and adjust this later. Say OK. And now let's select our next shade. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get a pretty close blue and just kind of make it a little bit lighter. And let's come back over here and make this one a little darker. That's just a subtle blue. And we'll say OK. And OK. Um, and this is kind of boring looking, but again, we're going to toss this image in there to uh, hopefully spruce it up a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our screenshot again. Let's go ahead and make these uh, boxes here. Uh, generally these are called buckets. So let's go ahead and make a new layer. Or actually we'll just make another rounded box. And we'll compare, drag. And we'll go ahead and rasterize this. Um, and let's go ahead and paste the layer style. So we get that drop shadow again. And we'll just turn color light overlay off. Um, and uh, let's come in and we're going to do another gradient. So we'll double click on effects. And come over here to gradient overlay. And it may be hard to see, but this is a very subtle gradient um, in these buckets. So let's go ahead and edit our gradient. And we'll make this a very, very, very subtle white or shade of gray. And OK, and we'll take a look at it. Now we've pretty much got it right, except for it's uh, upside down. So we'll just say OK, and we'll click Reverse. Maybe mess with the scaling here a little bit. It doesn't seem to be as white down here as I like it. So let's click on the gradient again, make sure this is white. And it is. So maybe we'll make this a little darker so we can see it change. And we'll say OK, and OK. So let's go ahead and name it Bucket Background. And for this, we're going to get 